My name is Ritu Dalmia and I'm a woman chef. When this theme was given of uh, looking through the looking glass, I mean, I got very excited, went back to my old copy of Alice in Wonderland, you know, the world of Mad Hatter, Humpty Dumpty, Tweedledee Tweedledum, and not to forget my favorite character, the Red Wicked Queen. Now, when I look at it, when I looked at it again, I realize that like many other stories, like many other fantasies, there's more to just a little story for young people. And actually, Alice was badass. And she really should be a heroine of a sociology or a philosophy book rather than a little book for the kids. How many of you have read Alice in Wonderland? Okay, and how many of you have read it in the recent years? Okay, brilliant. So, whoever hasn't read it, please read it. Whoever has read it when they were younger, please go and look at it again. So, the symbolism when we talk about through the looking glass and what's amazing, what's really amazing which I realize, everyone has their own interpretation to it. Our first speaker, she spoke about through the looking glass as various phases in her life. But when I think about through the looking glass, it's about looking into the mirror and finding the world upside down. You know what's the sad part? I'm not looking in this mirror. My life as a chef, as a woman, as a lesbian, I'm not looking in the mirror. I am in that mirror. And the whole world actually is upside down, whether we like it or not, at least in my world. You know, COVID was difficult. We all talk about pandemic, but the reality is pandemic is a thing of the past. Every industry was hurt, hospitality especially. But after pandemic, every restaurant's full. We are thriving. But guess what? None of the people who worked in the industry want to come back to work anymore. And why is that? Because you know what happened? People, when they start a career, a profession, they start young. So you are in a roller coaster and all you do is jump from one carriage to another. And that's what all the hospitality people did. And then there was a break, the break of the pandemic, where they suddenly realized, hang on, there seems to be something called life. There is something called weekends. There's something called spending time with my family on Christmas, New Year, Diwali. Is there something called going to bed at 10 p.m.? And uh, that realization also made them realize that no money in the world is worth it. So we have a crisis. We really have a crisis. And in a way, you know, food, hospitality is about softness. It's about giving. It's about nurturing. But how can it be soft when there's so much harshness behind the scene? You guys all have regular jobs, I'm sure many of you are uh, students, you have a life, you give an exam, you study before the exam and you're judged by your results, maybe midterms or quarterly or at the end of the year. In the hospitality industry, we are judged moment to moment. Is that cool? Not really. No wonder there is so much suicide, so much mental illness and complete rate of burnout before the age of 50. Who's to be blamed? All of you, you are part of that problem, just the way I am part of that problem. And today, the solution also lies with you. You're part of this ecosystem. When you go to a restaurant, sometimes you forget that the guy who is serving you is actually giving up on his personal life, is sacrificing his time with the family just to make your life special. How many of you like to eat out? Huh, more or less everyone. Can you imagine a life where there will be no restaurants? You'll be cooking for yourself every day. All right, special occasions. First cook, slog in the kitchen, and then eat it yourself. And this is what's going to happen if we don't change this right away. This is a huge problem 
and as i said next time all of you go to a restaurant do me a favor just give that extra smile to the guy who's serving you be a little bit more forgiving if your meal is not like it was every day maybe the chef is having a bad day and a little thank you will go a long 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 way so this is one part of the problem there's another part of the problem i'm only you see i'm as i said i'm not an intellectual i haven't even been to college ma'am so my life only revolves around the topics that involve me or my life food you know i have italian restaurants um, now also indian but my main restaurants have always been italian and when i started my career my thrill was oh i want tomatoes coming in from italy i want new zealand lamb chop i want fish from norway oh how amazing i will have all the real authentic ingredients the stupid me didn't realize how many kilometers they need to travel the stupid me did not realize what is a carbon footprint and the stupid me did not realize what i'm doing to the local producers and the local farmers just trying to be this fancy cool chef i'm older i'm wiser i'm 50 years old now and today also the real reality has hit me no farmer no food and the thing is we all think food is cheap it's way of life it's a necessity but food it nourishes us it sustains us are you trying to say by saying food is cheap life is cheap i don't think so i don't think so eating seasonal food eating local food has always existed and especially in our country when you go to any small towns or villages they eat what is in season winter time is sag winter time is bajra summer time is dahi or summer time is simple dal but we in urban cities we like to bring all fancy food which is great it's good for my business uh, but i'm not talking to you as a divas owner right now i'm talking to you as ritu who suddenly realized many things in her ripe old age and another thing in urban city yes farm to table organic food it's all become quite fashionable all right but what you need to realize it's not fashionable it has to be the way of life today eating sustainable food is not to be encouraged it has to be celebrated and as i said all of you are part of this problem all of you are the solutions to this problem so guys start thinking about it and you guys better start doing something about it so as i said my name is ritu dalmia i'm a chef but i'm also a woman when you know i started working a lot of people used to ask me oh is it very difficult for you i mean being a woman in this male dominated industry you started when you were 16 and i used to get quite defensive and trying to sound cool and said no not at all being a woman has been easier for me and i'm quite a cool dude and nothing can stop me and i'm invincible and unstoppable bullshit you know there's something called defense mechanism and that's what it was because i remember when i was growing up at the age of 16 right after school i used to go to my father's office just to get some brownie points for him just to show him that i was as good if not better than my brother when i started working in my kitchen i was the first one to come and the last one to go i used to pick up pots and pans with 25 30 kilos of food in spite of a back problem did i need to do it no but i did it why because i didn't want anyone to raise a finger at me and tell me ah as a woman she can't really do it now this is not acceptable and it should not be acceptable to any of us you know in uh, restaurant industry hospitality industry there are less than 7% women who work in my company is even less than 3% and it's not because of lack of trying we have tried but every time we have a young 
person who comes in who wants to become a chef who wants to have hospitality as a career after a few weeks either the father or the brother or the husband tells them they cannot do this because it's a menial job now where does the problem lie does the problem lie with the woman or does it lie with the family or the surroundings that she was born in this is something we all need to figure it out and that will only happen when you stop feeling guilty i think women because they have such a high emotional quotient it's always a guilt a working woman is going through this guilt all the time of managing her home as well as managing her work today why are the not top positions mainly filled by women because as i said women have emotional quotient they actually address problems far better than men because many a times they sacrifice their aspirations just trying to get some appreciation from the family just remember you are no less you're doing two jobs you're running a home you're running a family and you're taking care of a job as well and holding your own there so do me a favor just go and start demanding double salaries because you deserve it it's true maybe even two and a half times uh some may hate me for saying this but i think part of the problem are women themselves uh over the period of time you know with the intergenerational systems with the ecosystem that we live in women who are discriminated in their lives early on when they become a mother when they run a home you will still find the same discrimination being carried forward the best piece of chicken is safe for the men in the house education is a first priority for a boy yes maybe we are forward thinking enough to give our daughter a chance as well but that's secondary it is your bloody right it's not your privilege and you got to understand that and all you women out here who soon will be maybe carrying this forward remember if you don't start that education early at home and get over that mera ladla puttar or maada ladla the same going to change so as i said it is in your hands and as i said today when people brag about you know we have so many positions for women we have so much we are doing so much for women i go back and retreat they're not doing you a favor it's your goddamn right all right so don't be grateful for it just walk in and accept it with your head held high now i'm getting a bit morose here right uh but it's all not bad huh it's not all bad we are not all this bunch of sati savitris either and nor are we all these weak creatures either and the best thing for me to get this feeling back that we are cool and strong is very recently i met a young girl a nepalese girl who's 21 year old i met her in milan and her parents run a little dhaba in kathmandu she was offered a job in serbia to go and work in a restaurant and she fought with her family that i want a better life i want to go somewhere as close to europe so i can hone my cooking skills she arrives in serbia she was made to work in a factory she was not paid 30 of them were together in one room but the cool cool sanjana said i'm not going to take this shit a few of them ran away from serbia walked from serbia to milan over 33 days and she arrived and today i'm so proud to say she's part of my restaurant speaker team in milan and every time i meet her and ask her what do you want sanjana she says i want to be a better chef than you all right i can't wait i'm looking forward to it my name is ritu dalmia i'm a chef i'm a woman but guess what i'm also a lesbian so in our society for some reason lesbian is a very dirty word 
you know when you say gay it's still okay because you still sort of associate it with you know flair fashion style but the minute you say you're a lesbian it's almost like announcing to this patriarch world of ours that i don't need a man and the reality is it's a very sad reality that women are more closeted than men are they have a harder time accepting their sexuality than men do and this i know because in all the years of the restaurants that i've been running the number of male couples that we see dining there who is obvious who are in love is seven times higher than women couples coming in there's a saying if you're invisible that's also a form of violence when i was young you know i used to have really short hair i used to wear only boys clothes because as i said i thought being boy was a better to be than a girl was this was about 8 9 i grew up 13 14 i had started having lots of friends coming over and quite intense relationship with my friends and my brother who was not much older than me started saying sita geeta are these girls and i used to laugh again giggle because i didn't know what the hell that meant but somewhere it started bothering me really started bothering me what do i do i grow my hair can you imagine me with long hair trust me i can't but i did i started wearing salwar kameezes okay and once in a while even put a bindi when i was going out i started dating men in fact quite a few many of them and today if i may say so that's been my biggest regret in life it's my biggest regret that i did things just to get out of my own world where i felt that i was so belittled rather than do things for love but thankfully i became financially independent very young and this phase did not last for me too long but not everyone is so lucky is are they when you hear the stories of the struggles the lgbtqi community has it's heartbreaking i have lots of kids who write to me very often and their biggest struggle is first with themselves forget about the society forget about the family it's their own acceptance and we are talking about 7 to 10% population of the world who go through it maybe that's the reason maybe i don't know that i petitioned against 377 the most archaic victorian law which made any form of unnatural sex a criminal offense punishable by life sentence we won the case wonderful i won't be put in jail you won't be whoever's uh, from the community will not be put in jail is that enough is that enough what do you think is most important thing that we need to get over any form of marginalization with anyone acceptance yes how would you normalize it so the most important thing is education at home just the way education at home that women are equal to men it's the same way what is the biggest gift that we have the biggest gift that we have living in countries which are not under dictatorship living in a country which has the most beautiful constitution in the world it's freedom it's freedom to love freedom to choose until every household does not educate till each one of you don't become part of that education it's not going to change even in the western world where decriminalization same sex marriage civil partnership has been there for donkey's years law is one thing living in the society is another thing so when you guys hear someone mocking a friend who thinks is gay or a lesbian or transgender don't you dare accept it if your parents talk about any of people of the community in a derogatory way have the courage to correct them 
if you have any friends or any family member who's part of the community and is struggling with it, be the first one to be there and support them. This is not something you need to do as a way of life. This is your moral obligation and it's your moral responsibility. And maybe that's the reason very recently we are working on a LGBTQI center because as I said, changing the law is not enough. People need to actually understand and accept themselves before that. And this center's main job will be education, psychotherapy help, acceptance, and most important, financial independence, so they know they have somewhere to go. Oh God, I think is my time nearly up? Because I'm out of words. <laughs> but uh, on a serious note, when we talk about this amazing through the looking glass, I'm actually at the end of the day an optimistic. And in spite of the fact that the world is upside down in my world, I can see that little light at the end of the rabbit hole. I'm so ready to get out. Are you? Thank you. Thank you.